United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to tonight's planning board meeting. Please be aware of the fire exit, which is to your left of this room. And in the event of an emergency, please move in a calm and orderly fashion down the stairs and do not use the elevator. The meetings are recorded by the secretary for the purpose of a record and minutes. So please identify yourself each time you come to the podium and speak into the microphone. The board will follow the items in the order that they appear on the agenda, extra copies of which are near the front door. After the case has been called, the applicant entered the representative shall come to the podium, identify him or herself, give his or her address, and then present their case. The planning board members will then have the opportunity to question the applicant. If this case is a public hearing, it will be open for a public input, at which time anyone wishing to speak to the board regarding this application will come to the podium, identify themselves along with their address, and direct any questions to the board. Once all public input has been completed, the applicant or site representative will be given the opportunity to respond to any public input. Once all public input has been completed and all questions have been satisfied, the case will be closed to the public input and the board will then move on to a decision. No further input will be allowed at that point. Uh, just as a point of interest, we do not have any public hearings tonight. Correct? Yes. The only matters before our board is town board referrals and meeting minutes. So... Um, I guess at this point, would the town like to introduce the topics for discussion? Sure. So um, the first one is the rezoning of 2180 East Stridge Road. It is the, um, currently the library will be um, looking to rezone, the town is looking to rezone from R1 uh, to commercial, which um, as we talked about at the workshop, um, it's consistent with the comprehensive master plan in terms of what the surrounding businesses and zoning is. Um, on one side it's a Wegmans, on the other side it's a Walgreens. Um, and I'm addressing right now the Monroe County's Department of Planning, their comments. The, the first one was uh, comprehensive plan. Um, does it, um, in terms of what the rezoning is, does it make sense in terms of what the comprehensive plan talks about for that parcel on that corridor, which obviously Eastridge Road is the main commercial corridor we have in town. And the second one actually talked about first school, which was a low, they thought was a local designation historic site. We actually had them, it should be in your packets, there's a retraction from the county. They actually had some bad mapping in terms of where they thought that school was located. So that is not the location of that school. That was actually the Wegmans parcel. Um, we don't, we're not exactly sure why they put that in their comments because it doesn't um, carry. And uh, uh, myself, we spoke to the Monroe County Planning, and they just had some bad information. So um, in terms of addressing their, their comments, that was what they had. Um, and this is really a map amendment. This is not in terms of future projects or things that might go on there, which we, are, we don't know at this point. The one thing we do know is we wanted to bring it into um, conformance with the other zoning along Ridge Road. Um, we do know at some point later next year it won't be a library anymore. Um, and what that process holds, we're not certain at this point, but an important step the town thought to take was to bring it into line with what the zoning was along Ridge Road. So, and Ashley, I don't know if you want to add anything, but... No, I think that was good. And just so everyone in the public is aware, the town has provided us with a comprehensive... Um, review and application process, which the town board is going to be reviewing this after we make our recommendation, but um, they've analyzed the site from every different aspect. The environmental assessment form has been completed. Um, the part three attachment we have a draft of, which we are not, it's not under our purview, but is under the town board's purview. And to me, the application seemed very complete and very concise and very well put together. I compliment okay. the town. Thank you. And the public hearing will be at the town board level. The seeker will be done at the town board level. Um, the item before you is, is a referral from them as to what the planning board's opinion from a planning perspective does. And actually, correct if I'm wrong, does it being rezoned as a commercial parcel um, make sense and is in compliance with what the master plan and the plan for Ridge Road would be? Right. So, so the recommendation would be whether or not this board felt that the, the proposed rezoning was appropriate. And the, the rezoning is currently R1 residential, and the proposed zoning is C business district. Correct. It doesn't seem 
very logical to have a site as maintained as R1 in that relative area there at this point. Do we need to vote on this or just uh, do a, just a recommendation? I think, we'll do a, I think we'll, the vote will be the recommendation. Yep. Yes. If you have any, any findings or any thoughts to, to give to the town board, you would do it through the vote and the findings in your... In right. Your, uh, so... Nope. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if you thought that it was appropriate, um, that could that could be your vote, the the recommendation uh, for the rezoning, and then give you know any detailed comments or conditions or any other findings that you have on that. I know we've had an opportunity to vet this and talk about it at the um, workshop, but now that everyone's had a chance to digest the information, does anyone else have any questions or comments? I'll start with you, Kimmy. No, we, I think we talked this through really well at the workshop, and it was a really good package, and it's a good thing to do. Mary? I agree. It's a good idea. Michael? I think it's very logical also. really falls on it. I, right. agree, I agree, Peter, and regrettably I was unable to attend the workshop, but Nick and I, you, you had a conversation. And as I understand the proposed action, the new C general business zoning would allow every use and special use within the code. Is that correct? Including a library, which it will operate as for as far as we know for the rest of the year. Um, and until there's a separate project before us, that's the only action. Right. So we'd be able to analyze any project that came before us under its merits and analyze seeker and such under the planning process. Well, you have you, you have correct. To, there's not. That's not. A, it wouldn't be a choice that the board had. It would have an obligation. So the action before us, you know, if we were, I mean, we don't know what this may be in the future and and what could happen with the property and that would come with its own review process well where, where I'm going with that and again we had this conversation so that I can yeah. understand what happened at the, uh, the um, workshop meeting um, it would seem to me that this is a perfect application for some sort of a transition codification because we do have that Ridgewood neighborhood right behind that so what I'm looking for is how do we eliminate potential issues down the road not just tomorrow 10 years 50 years from now um, you've got a neighborhood there certainly any application would have to um, be applicable to the seeker process mm -hmm. but still um, it would just seem to me that a pertinent a good proposal might be um, make a suggestion to the town board as to what will happen to that neighborhood behind them you mean the one that has the businesses next door to it now? No, where the library is now. No, that's what I'm talking about, because yeah. that neighborhood, I think it does, I said it. But if you look at the Wegmans, if you look at the Wegmans, everything is blocked, it's been done. Absolutely, like the fence you know. that is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So like the fence that already exists there. Right. Like saying that that should remain there. And perhaps be extended beyond. Because, let's face it, if we take the most intense purpose under a C code, you know, commercial code, um, do we want to potentially or open up the potential for the devaluation of properties behind? How so? How, I, I guess in other I would, words, in other words, I would want to understand say, because right now, let's, let's look at it what, for what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a Wegmans. Mm -hmm. It's a business, right? Right. And you have a Walgreens. Mm -hmm. And you have a fence. Mm -hmm. so, so let's I, say, I guess I would be curious. Let's say, let's what, say would, we, what is the action that you're proposing? I, I would just like to see less intense, you know, that we recommend that it, this could be a transition. Less intense for like a drive through less intense than a drive through pharmacy? Yeah, I mean. Or like the Wegmans it. that already exist? So yeah. you want to like take the C commercial list and eliminate some of the uses that could be potential there? Actually, I would. I would. Well, if that was the action, and certainly that's why the seeker process, if and when that were to come before you, you can certainly have that. That could be part of something you look at as part of the site plan, but what's before you today is not that. But if it's part of recommending a code change, it's not a it's code, not a change. code yeah, change. It's a, it's, a map, code change. it's a map amendment. What you need to do is go to the town board and voice your concerns at the town board level. Well, I'm, just, I'm just asking and, and questions, ask them too, because I wasn't. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. No, I, no. I totally understand. No. Where you're, I'm just I'm trying to point out and give context mm -hmm. so that we understand exactly what we're talking about. Ray, okay. the, um, the moving of this to uh, to out of residential um, I know how you, what you're thinking but moving it to commercial would make it so much more consistent and whatever ramifications there might be for separation from commercial to the residential you would have the prerogative of 
having an impact in that when it came before this board. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think you're thinking of the rear property line and whatever screening or methodology that we would yeah. have of of, of um, tempering that use to the adjoining rear property. but Which I think would be consistent with what I think probably previous Sorry, boards there. have done along Ridge Road where they border residential neighborhoods, right? So at some point you had a Walgreens that was put up at some point in the past and there was considerations made for that screening and you had a Wegmans that those considerations were obviously made by the the wall you talk about. So I think that was probably a key part of those past board's decisions when they looked at how those are buffered, right? So for as long as this building is a library and as a government use, the current buffering will exist as it is. If at any point it, another project were to come before you that it was a commercial, I think we not only would have to look at that, but it would be a responsibility of the board to look at uh, the buffering between the two. Right. The two different districts. That would be an appropriate site plan consideration for any new development. Okay. Jay? I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, you want me to make a That would motion? be phenomenal. <laughs> How unusual, not, too. Uh, wow, it's a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, on the on the matter before us with the for a town board referral of the uh, for rezoning the uh, parcel of land located at 21 East Ridge Road um, from R1 residential to C commercial zoning uh, I move uh, a favorable opinion by this board to the town board I'll second that unless you do it nope I'm just wondering what comments to put down. I don't know that there are any other than we've we're we're, we're favorable gonna highly. We're, we're going to review any application that comes before us, mm -hmm. and so I don't know. I mean, the, 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 the application itself is is uh, clear, concise, and right, and all that other good stuff. So. It, I don't really know what else we have to add. I don't know either. It, it sounds like the board would is saying that they think that this is an appropriate use of the land, that the C, <coughs> that the commercial zoning um, is more uh, reflective of the other properties in the area, and that it's th that the rezoning will, you know, <coughs> put the property more in line with surround with the surrounding neighborhood in furtherance of the goals in the comprehensive plan. Just so many blank lines here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, all those in favor say a. Aye. 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 Is it a or I? It's I. <laughs> a I. Any opposed say nay. Seeing none. Motion carries with one absence. Thank you. Next matter, if you would introduce it, please. Sure. Um, so this became before you guys back in July, um, the board back in July. Um, it was the amendment to the sign code, primarily the <coughs>
a couple things came out of that in terms of in terms of enforceability um, consistency there was some language in the code that we had proposed that um, was inconsistent in terms of sizes different businesses being approved for more signs than others etc so what we tried to do when looking at it was make it so that if you were going to make this amendment so that in the business districts you were going to have a frame signs that it would be enforceable and it would be consistent and if someone were want if a business were to want to have more than if a business wanted to have relief from the zoning code there's an avenue for to do that you could if you wanted more than one sign because originally in here there was um, you know I think it was farm markets could have more than one sign and some other things if you wanted that the avenue to do that would be a zoning would be a, a variance from the zoning board um, just like you would have for any relief from the zoning code so we try to make it as consistent as possible in terms of the language used and in terms of the dimensions of signs and the types of businesses that could have signs but it became very clear through the public hearing process that um, businesses really felt the need that to have these was important and they, they cited different um, cases where they'd seen an influx in their business because they had them and you know at the end of the day business owners don't have they don't just do stuff for the fun of it they have enough things going on in their life if they think that this is helping them promote their business then our job was to find a way to do it in a way that was not um, burdensome but also it doesn't force a look to an a-frame sign that is aesthetically pleasing as an a-frame sign could be um, and that's kind of the way we took a look at um, cleaning up the proposal we had as a response to the residents and the businesses we saw um, before us so um, you already issued comments back um, in July um, as a board um, I think the the main thing now would be to look at uh, I thought it was important given the change that we the town thought it was important to bring it back before the board if there was any additional comments you had um, or questions you had before you were to refer it to the town board um, that, that we could do it at this time I think this is again a, a great iterative process and back and forth with the editing of the sign code to make something that made more sense um, certainly reading the old code it didn't seem to work to the best benefit of the town or the applicant so I think this has been a great strides towards um, making that much better and much more um, manageable and enforceable so I commend the town again on that effort um, I like the dialogue that's come out of your office about the rationale for some change right. I mean, it's, it's it's put some stuff into everyday language for one of the things you said tonight was a, a business is having enough to do without going out and making an a-frame sign to go out there just look nice nice uh, it has a, a business boost behind it. it has a motivation for the for them to do it and Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the more junky poo it looks, I think the the less it it, it, it gathers in uh, customers anyway. Uh, right. Is junky poo a word? <laughs> oh, I, I, so. I think we just um, I think we just made it one. <laughs> Check uh, Wikipedia. Find anything. Uh, Kimmy, did you have any comment or additions? Uh, again, I think it was really important to standardize things, streamline the process, make it work for both uh, businesses and the town, and I think that was done very well. Mary, any more? Or, I'm sorry, you've done them. So, Mary? No, I feel that that is very well done. Michael? I said my piece. Right. I I couldn't agree more. I think it's been very well done. I think the give and take has been sensational, and I couldn't disagree more. As we've spoken, I think in the past, as it relates to uh, what you term whip sales and wind sales. Yeah. I think they have a place. I think it's an absolute preclusion to a specific type of marketing for any business, any given business. Mm -hmm. I think if it's in the right place, not in the right way. Mm -hmm. um, it's fine. I have seen absolutely zero documentation, statistics as it relates to sure. an, an aberration to traffic, etc., accidents, and yeah. so forth. And I think they have a lifespan. So yeah, we it, talked about that, right? Okay. It's I, I, interesting. I mean, that's something to look at whether or not they, a whip sale should be allowed for like a grand opening or something of that nature. For a, for a particular period of time, for a particular season. <coughs> 
I don't believe that there should be multiple whip sales on a given property like there is right now. Sure. At the corner yeah. of Hudson and Ridge and Hudson mm -hmm. for the furniture store. But I think it's, a, it's an amenable um, means to market a particular business, a grand opening, a special, etc. And I think it should be permitted. Uh, can I ask a question? Just sure. How would you enforce that in terms of time of year and, and timing? And I think, it's, I think it's pretty clear that the printing on any of those sales diminishes with sun. That's what I'm seeing. Um, on a whip rain, sales, cetera, right? Whip sales, yeah. that's a certain part of the thing, right? The whip sale doesn't really have much on. So I guess I'm just wondering. I, so from an enforceability standpoint, because I understand what you're saying, but how, so you allow them to have it for a couple of weeks. and then, So how do, you, how do you envision enforcing that? Because I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just. I think, I think they have to come. They have to permit it. Yeah. And at that point, you've got some sort of permit that has been issued by sure. the town. And let's face it. A whip sale, a wind sale, however we want to term that, is much more easy to see or define mm -hmm. than an A-frame. So in a night like tonight, I think it's a great example, right? And I think the reason that we put the prohibition in there mm -hmm. is even with the new Ridge Road, there's people travel at a high rate of speed on Ridge Road, myself included, unfortunately. I should slow down. But you get these, you get moving and you have these whip sales and that are not as secure is 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 even in you know, a-frame signs again it's not like they're planted in the ground it's not like we're saying that they're that much more secure but at the end of the day i think the concern is you have people on a highly trafficked road um you have these whip sale signs which are much more prone to fall over um do you want and do you want that look and i i mean that's up for debate i mean that's why you have the conversation but um and i can certainly understand in a limited fashion but i, I do i think our when we looked at it we had concerns about just allowing them just in general. Um, Statistically, Nick, and Jay brought up a good point at one of the past meetings that this perhaps is something that should be readdressed down the road. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, looked at not just once, but multiple times. Um, have you ever had a situation where one has blown in the road and it has affected traffic? Again, let, off the top of my head, I can't answer that. Let's look at statistics. Yeah. You know? Um, I saw the ones that I mentioned on Ridge and Hudson. Sure. Very, very windy day on Saturday, planted into the ground, and I yeah. mean it was blowing. They weren't going anywhere. Yeah. So I, I don't know that that's an issue. Does it help the gentleman's business? I don't know that either, but I, I can't preclude him. Well, I think, the same, I think the same rule would apply if they wouldn't be doing it if they didn't thought it helped their business, right? But the, it's striking a balance, which is the whole exactly. point of this code, right? E exactly. So I think it's something we can look at. I think it's, it's reasonable to, in a grand opening type situation, I, I, I don't think, I don't agree that they should be allowed ad hoc just across town. I think it doesn't give, no. I think it's a total different feel than you would have for an A-frame sign if you just lined Ridge Road with whip sale signs. I think that would look a lot different than if you if you didn't otherwise do it. I don't know whose phone that is. It's not mine. I'm not, Nick, so, I'm not recommending that at all. Yeah. Absolutely not. So, if someone is opening a business, I think it's, if that works for them, to draw attention to their business, to help spur profitability, huh. it's something that should be looked at. We could add that to the, you know, we can add that to the findings, too. I don't know who's that. Lost. Mine's missing. It's not mine. <laughs> not mine. I don't own one. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. I'd rather, st well, it's more of a statement. I would oh, rather see the, hmm? I would rather see the whip signs than these guys standing out in the middle of the road wearing a sign. The human sign? Yeah. Yeah, the human sign. Yeah. Um, crazy notion. Sure. Uh, if I want to put up a whip sale, I'm going to have to come and ask your permission. Well, right now, it's I mean, prohibited. under this current code, no, I mean, be, be if, you, if it's something you think about down the road. Well, we would have to put it in. I see what you're saying, Mike, but you'd have to put it. That's what the code is. If it prohibits it, then you couldn't be able to do it. So if no. you did it. Without a use variance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could go. I mean, in th yes. In theory, you could go get a use variance for mm -hmm. your whip sale. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to be. It'd be very sure. hard. Zoning mm -hmm. board meeting. Uh, the standard um, but yes, would be hard, Mark, but yeah. To answer your question, there, you there could. was a somewhere in the dialogue. You know, <coughs> again, the, the mention was the, the business wouldn't do it if it wasn't good for the business. And, and yes. And 
and I, I'm thinking that if if somewhere there was a paragraph entertaining that if, if you could show just cause and, and you come in and present for, for the for yeah. the whip sale, you know. The, so, but my question to them would be, how long do you need it for? Well, I think that gets back. To, I think okay. the right if you were going to do it, it would have to it would have to be part of like a you know grand opening caveat to this, right? Yeah. Well, let's bring this. Let's, let's, hold it. Hold hold it. Uh, may I interrupt, you, Pete, if I may? Um, I don't think it has to be limited to grand opening. It could be also seasonal special. Right, like a big. It could be, you know, a variety of different things. But I think it has to be permitted by the community. And I think you might want to look at it as a seasonal advertisement, yeah. as opposed. I mean, in other words, I don't want to see a whip sale in the middle of the snow in February. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that it should be right on the street. I think it should be, in many cases. Uh, we'll call it the other side of the sidewalk. Oh, I don't know what's not mine. It's not my pacemaker either. Um, but I think it should be on the opposite side so it's not that close to the street. Okay. And I think those are the things we, we really need to look at. But, again, if I'm a business owner and I want to promote something, mm -hmm. and you're going to basically, if I feel that that's the best way to promote my business and it's a preclusion to me, I'm not going to be real happy. Well, do you th they're not permitted now, right. so the people that do it, you know, what I mean, that's right. It's also keeping in the context of what what's actually happening here. That the reason we're doing this to bring it all back full circle is, right now, there's people that feel a need, the business owners that feel a need, not because they, not because they want to, because they feel that they have to to promote their business. They've chosen to advertise, and they they don't not looking to break the town code. They're doing it because you know, it's the past it has been, well, at best, not enforced. So we're trying to solve a problem and. Um, I mean, I'd like to give Jay an opportunity to comment now, too. So, I mean, the point being is that whip sales being precluded from the current ordinance, proposed ordinance, is something that Ray feels strongly should yeah. perhaps be reconsidered. So, sure. um, We can put that in the findings. Yeah. That's, right. that's fine. Yeah. That's right. And Jay? Uh, I, I agree that uh, this has been a good process back and forth. I would, I don't. I guess I'd ask the attorney if, if this is something that we'd like to recommend that we would review after a few years. Do we put that in the code, or I think you could put it in the findings? And I don't know how we'd write it necessarily. And, and I've looked at this. One of the things, I don't know how we. Like, yeah, in you're the, in about like a sunset provision of the. Yeah. I don't know. Do you? But do you want to have a sunset provision right in the code, or do you? Because then what happens is it. Does that mean you can use any signs or no signs? If it sunsets, if it goes away, then then there's no regulations on signs, and people would be able to freely have whatever so signs they want. I wanted. just like to, at least in our findings, I'd like to put something along the lines <laughs> of that it's reviewed, and, I, and we I, can I, almost I, we can look at it this way. I mean, in the zoning board, there's been instances where we've granted special use permits for I'll, I'll use only because it's it's been the last few months poultry, um, and allowing. No, I'm serious. So that we we would allow they allow folks to have chickens. chickens. But they have to be looked at, and it's not in town code. But they they ask to look at them every two years. That's not in the code. That's a in, in, at the end of the day, it's a recommendation from the zoning board to look at it. Um, we can look at how we do that. I don't know that we. I don't think we would write it into the code, but it's something we could look at two you know two years from now to see how the how it's been going. We can write it into the findings and. Right. So rather than. Um a sunset provision, maybe just like a, a best practice that you yeah. want to put in, saying that you think it makes sense for the the town to revisit. Which in reality we should be doing. Well, I mean, every we should I be mean, looking at all. Of in our reality, own. to me, it's kind of. I mean, we can say it if we want to, but it's unnecessary. I mean, the need arises. A proactive administration should take things head on and 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 react to and enact legislation as required. I mean, and you know, to say that you need to review in two years is just. I mean, why that versus three, five, one, six months? Who knows? I mean, to me, the Pete, if if I may, um, well, let, let me, like let I me said, we can add it in if me, you want let me to. Just I don't continue really care. On my, but, uh, I the reason I wanted to review in two years is because at that point, I think we might be able to have some set of data that says whether or not the sign provision is as um, improved or. <coughs> Um, or if there's concern with respect to safety. I'm looking at this more in a, as a safety concern than anything else. And I, I want to make sure that after some point of time we review it 
And whether we say it's a year, five years, or six years, or whatever, I don't really care what the time is. I, I and I don't I don't want to I don't want to hold it to um, you know when you if you, when and if you have a proactive administration on this particular item. Administrations have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, whether they're proactive or not in this particular one doesn't mean that they're proactive or, or not. It's just that this is one of the things that I think we should review on a regular basis because it, it's something that's new and I want to see if it has a negative impact on safety more than anything else. So it should be reviewed as a as needed basis? Yeah, and we, I think we can put it in the fi that's That's a fine thing to have in or the findings years. and it, it makes sense. And I think that, believe me, no one's going to be looking at it more than we are. So I'm saying the conditions or suggestions or board recommends review the code in two years or is as needed. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then um, I've got a couple other things that are relatively minor, but one is uh, in section three A eight. Um, it it says something here about uh, all portable temporary sensor maintain a safe condition all times. Uh, um, and number nine, it it talks about what would happen if there's a uh, if there's road construction. In both these cases, are we going to develop any kind of uh, guidelines with respect to that? And one of the things that we brought up before, I think, is a good one. I mean, I don't know how often, with respect to a frames, that they fall over um, from wind, but I do know that there's a lot of signs that, uh, like stop signs, that are in the middle of. Uh, uh, a, a traffic a, a sure. traffic way they drill holes in them to let the wind pass through so it's not just a sail it's a uh, um, it actually has a way for the wind to to go through it and not knock it down I don't know if that's necessary for a frame signs but I don't know if that's something that we'd want to recommend to people that that have them that actually to, to drill a few holes in them so there is ways for the air to pass through and it's not just a solid piece of uh, uh, of something to that, that can potentially fall over, and I think to the extent to which we would see that there, were, if, so if this became a consistent problem where there were signs falling over constantly, and it was because of the wind, where we would work with the business owner to come up with a way to make their sign um, sound from a, like a structurally, you know, not it's not going to take away from the way it looks. But it's still going to help keep it yeah. upright. I see what you're saying. I, yeah. I would actually do that. Something. I think that's written in there for that reason, really, too. That if it's continuing to blow over, that's and be on the ground and be, be a hazard. Then that's obviously against the code, and then we have to we'd have to address it like we would with you know any homeowner on any number of issues, and we could talk to them about well, why is it blow over? Is it blow over because it's windy? Is it getting hit by? Is there what's the reason? And then work with them to find a way. And it could be drilling holes in it. It could be weighing it down. It could be putting a weights in the middle of it where there's a frame right. staking it. it yeah. Just, just there's some, a number of things. I, I, I guess that's the what I'm getting at. It though yeah. is though is though are you going to come up with some guidelines? Uh, because in both these cases, what you're giving are, you know, I want it to be safe. I want it to be nice looking, and those are all um, pretty subjective. Sure. And so I don't know if you're when people come in for a sign ordinance, they want to do a sign. If you're going to have some guidelines or recommendations, there is the question. Well, the guidelines will be this, but I think you're asking if well, there's... Well, this is the law, and yeah, I'm wondering and if there's also going to be guidelines that give people ideas or recommendations about Sure, we can give them examples of one that, that ones okay. that look good around town or, or ways to secure it in a way that doesn't detract from the aesthetics of the sign. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the other part of, of that is, and I, this is going to sound self-serving because of the business I work in, but um, any kind of re reflective material uh, that are on these signs also helps um, so that people can see them if they're driving at night and stuff like that. It might, I, my, the, my company makes reflective material. That's why I'm saying it might be self-serving, but it's also good practice potentially to, to do that. Okay. The next section, B, um, there's a, if you go into D, there's a, um, there's an extra word in there that I'll, I'll show you where it is. Um, um, the, um, under E, so B1E. Mm -hmm. Do we have 
I'll ask you about that later too. It says there's nothing. It's maybe just me being con um, confused about it. Um, the under two B two D is that a place that it maybe you've already have it someplace else and that's fine. But under that one, it 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 spells out where you have to have it. But is it is there some place in this? particular section that it says something about not impeding pedestrian traffic. Because I think, think this one's more about in a plaza and, and and I would say Jay, I think that that would be maintaining them in a safe I think that would go back to maintenance. Um, if we want something written in there, I think public health and safety that I think impeding someone's right of way in a plaza would would classify qualify as that. Um, but we can certainly write something in Jay, if you look at um, B1D at the end of the line, at the end of that section, it oh, talks yeah. about it not envision, uh, not impeding the vision or access of motorists or yeah. impeding um, pedestrians. Um, yeah. And so, are you suggesting that a similar statement be added to the section yeah. talking about the non-perimeter, the ones that are near the entryway? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's in that section, but it's not in the section below it. The talking B2. about. D. Right. So the the reason it was definitely specified, and the perimeter is to make sure that it's not going to impede, you know, access or sight lines, you know, visual visual access. So um, we would assume that, uh, that folks wouldn't put a sign close to their entrance that was going to get in the way of people getting into their business. But we can always add that in just to be sure that po yeah. folks when they're putting. A sign I, I, I on just their think property. that under that, because it's under the first one, it'd be good to put it under Absolutely. the second one. I know it makes sense, but uh, that's. And then under B. No. B. No. D. Under D, educational, charitable, public service. <laughs> that one it talks about temporary signs, but does it, it doesn't talk about the length of time that you can have them. And I was wondering if there should be a length of time in that one. We can look at that, Jay. And I think part of the reason for putting portable temporary signs in there is the way that it's defined in the, co the definition of those signs is practically the same. Um, so well, we can, then we maybe can look at cleaning we, up the I, language. I don't there. know if it needs to be <clears> that you put that it's it because it's a temporary sign. It has to go by all the rules of the temporary. Okay. Um, that's all I have. And then I guess the only other thing is I'm, I'm not going to be voting for recommendation of this law because I, I, um, I don't like the idea of A-frame signs. I, I think that there's, and I've, this is something that I've made very clear all along. It's not, this wouldn't be a big surprise. Um, I, I think that there's, um, any number of distractions already with people driving and this is another one and I don't think it's a good idea to put them on the roadway but I understand why businesses feel the need to do so um, we're talking about potentially you know to have a way of codifying it so we can enforce it right now it's codified that you can't have them and we're not enforcing it so I don't know how this makes it any better but I understand completely why people want to do it I just don't think it's a good idea. I understand. I just want to point out something that an important point that I should have noted before and I noted in the past is that uh, mostly these will be the, what we're talking about is CNM districts were along county roads. This was submitted to county planning and county DOT and they had no comments. So in terms of safety or things of that nature, if they were going to come up, certainly the county and the way that they approach their planning process, believe me, it's very thorough. And if they had a problem from a safety standpoint, they would have addressed it. Especially given the fact that it'd be a, it's largely going to be upon roads that are county roads. So I just wanted to point that out. I know that's come up a few times. How are we so going to enforce this? In terms of, you have to you have to hold people accountable to the code that exists. Um, if people, I mean, so they'll be giving. Run, is someone going to run around and see if these people have a permit? That's what we do every day. Mm -hmm. uh, not in this instance, but in just an instance in general that. It's what we are code enforcement officers do uh, day in and day out. Um, I think what will be important on this one is communicating it to business owners that we know currently have them. And that was what a big thing that came out of the public hearing that we had at the mm -hmm. town board level was 
folks that we know that have these in the f that, that may not be in compliance or for whatever reason in the past had them and we'll be getting this out to them and letting them know that this is what they need to do to become in compliance I, I'm not sure what the past practice was um, in terms of enforcement and that's not really the point now we're trying to solve the problem and to the extent people want to become in compliance with the code there's gonna be a very clear process come in get a sign permit and it has to adhere to these and if it doesn't you'll get a notice in the mail like anyone that violates the zoning code so drop your flask yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so what I have now are um, the board recommends review of the code in two years or as needed I have member McDonald recommends reconsideration of the prohibition of whip sales slash wind sales and I have unless anyone else wants to add their name to that also length of time for temporary signs should be noted or considered the rest of the things I didn't notice note because they were typo things or yeah. anything else I have nothing very good so I guess we're at the point where we're gonna make a motion but the motion to positively refer proposed local law to amend the section 235 article 21 of the code of the town of Rondequoit with the conditions as previously mentioned like that uh, recommendation thank you second second thank you Mary all those in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 all those opposed say nay One absent. Motion carries. All right. The next matter that we have are a number of meeting minutes, which I think that um, some review was made of. Or how did we leave that at that after the workshop? Um, before we go to this, can I? I just want to ask a question. We've had in the past. We've we um, if someone's not at the meeting then they can't vote on whether you know on on approving the meeting minutes correct is that necessary I mean as an example I mean I wasn't at uh, actually two of these meetings mm -hmm. I, I watched the meeting I know what happened viewing the minutes I know what did or didn't happen so is it necessary for me to abstain from voting on this it's I know it's been our policy all along but I'm just wondering if it's one that is codified or anything like that. I'm looking at the attorney. Yeah, from a legal perspective, I don't know of any prohibition on all board members that are present voting on the meeting minutes. It sounds like that's just more of a board or town policy that that you've had. I don't. There's no issue with that being your policy as long as you have a, a quorum to vote. Um, if, if you don't want people who were not at the meeting <coughs> voting to approve well, the minutes, then yeah, that's the, okay. The, but I don't know of a legal prohibition on that. The problem is, is that we have one. It, we have actually think two sets of meeting minutes here that would be good to get them approved. A more, I watch the meetings, and I don't know that we have. Again, on the first one, we don't have a quorum because we have two people that are no longer on the board that weren't were absent, mm -hmm. and Rich wasn't is not here tonight. So you'd have to either just uh, I can abstain from. We can just not vote on that one until Rich gets here. You talk about February twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. February twenty fourth. Yes. Which technically so you're saying that members yeah. who are not present can vote positively for meeting minute acceptance you is can allowed. Vote, you can vote for anything that's up for consideration from a legal perspective. I don't know if there's a, a separate policy that, that you have been operating under, but from a legal perspective, anything that's before the board, if you're present, and you don't have to recuse yourself for like a conflict of interest type issue, um, right. then, then yeah, you're permitted to vote for it. I just yeah. traditionally in the past I guess we have members who have not present have not voted M my thoughts are it, uh, it, 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 it 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 appears it would be a funny to have someone who was not present to hear all the innuendos that went on and, uh, and give and take to make uh, to vote um, without being present I understand what you've said and you've, you've, you've saw it on TV and 
and, y and you did all the other stuff, but it... Uh, I mean, technically, the people that are there have amended the meeting minutes to reflect the course of the meeting, and then you're just looking for, a, for affirmation that the meeting minutes can be approved on the strength of the other members. I, I agree. Point, right? I, I, I understand what Jay's saying, but I also think if you've had a consistent policy in the past, I, I don't... Okay. Unless you guys feel reason well, to there, change it. There's two of us here that weren't even here for them. Right. That's a fair point, too. So right? you may run into practical issues if you can't get a quorum of people who are here. It might be a practical standpoint. You know, we need to approve it a minute. We're here. Setting a unique precedent well, tonight. I think it's over. Which, well, it may begin to the point where we can never approve them. Right. Because you'll have, <laughs> if you never have, you'd have to have Plukas, Palermo, McDonald, and Wainer in present. No, I agree. It, these are old months. I agree. I don't. They have to be approved at some point, though. Um, yeah, so I think the answer is what we're comfortable with. And remember, all these, these are on doing. video, too. Well, why don't, in the case of, well, I guess we could defer it for one more meeting, and if we don't have a quorum of the members that are present, then we should take action without the member that's there. Is that why acceptable? Why don't we do the... We shouldn't defer all of them, though. So to no. the extent, is there that's what I'm saying. Just the February 21, 4-1. There's only one that we have to defer right now, but it's just that. I agree. I, I, I don't. Well, I don't know. It, it sounded like you didn't agree. No, I agree <laughs> in the sense that I'll be honest. With you, we 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 need to do the the meeting minutes. We'll need, need to talk about this as a town staff. They will be more timely in terms of we we won't be approving minutes from later in the years the way we we're doing right now. Well, that's fine. I, I just, I, I was just asking because it, it, to me, it doesn't make sense because I, you know. Right now it doesn't seem practical. I mean, we're talking about back to February. There's people right. that are not on the board anymore. I don't know that we have much of a choice uh, in that matter. Yeah. I mean, to me, I would either make the exception tonight or defer it to next meeting where if we don't have a quorum yeah. of the four, which is, I mean, that's not a quorum. It's all four members have to be present, then we need to vote on it at that next meeting or tonight we go ahead and make that exception I'm sorry there's also the the April 28th meeting that we have that we couldn't vote on as well, Oops. well we said oh, that. but all members even those that are absent have had a chance to provide input that's correct there's to me I would vote on them but it's up to everyone else it's, it's I, I leave it up to the body I don't have a strong opinion on whether or not if you guys feel comfortable doing it then and it's not, and it's legally yeah. able to be. I mean, done. I feel comfortable that the board has reviewed the meeting minutes, and it's a mere formality to approve mm -hmm. them with the people that are here. Mm -hmm. After listening to the dialogue, I have much more of a tendency to agree with Jay. Uh, you know, if you if you cared enough about it, and you and you read the minutes, and you you, you, you observed it at a numer numerous times, uh, you certainly have you certainly have the knowledge to go ahead and make an intelligent vote. What we're relying on is the other members of our board have have done their due diligence, and you know, in the case that everyone's a conscientious board member, I don't think we have any fear of any reprisal. Yeah. Right. It would be the same situation if you had an applicant before the board and the vote didn't take place till a meeting or or two later. It wouldn't prohibit a board member that wasn't there, you know, during right. the, the the presentation or the public hearing portion from voting on a decision, mm -hmm. you know, a couple meetings later because they didn't hear certain portions of it. So then are we in agreement that we will review these meeting minutes and everyone that's present will vote yes. on the meetings if sure. they feel comfortable doing so? Yeah. That's fine. yeah, if you don't feel comfortable, then you abstain. Yep. Yes. Just like anything else. Right. Right, you're quiet. It's just that I, I mean... I no, I took the time to I, you know, I travel for business every now and then. I, I'm not at all the meetings, right? And if I, I'm not in a meeting, I watch it. I want to know what's going on because the, yeah, I didn't just have. Well, I haven't missed any that I can remember, but I, <laughs> I watch them all too. Well, so, yeah, so. I watch them, so we all do I know it. what. Yeah. We're all kind of. And we're all kind of, so I, I have no you problem. Know. So is everyone in agreement um, that we will review the meeting minutes? Everyone that feels comfortable voting will vote, even whether you're in ab, ab, present or not. Yes. Okay. All right, so then we're not going to review the meeting minutes tonight of the 24th. No, we are going to review yeah, every single We're going to go through them all. Every one of them. Okay. Right. I mean, I, Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of the February 24th, 2014 minutes. Yes. I will second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? 
and seeing none, uh, abstain. I'm gonna abstain. I'm abstaining. I did not watch all those, so I don't feel comfortable. But you don't need my vote to have a quorum. That's correct. Should have a form for these to. Okay. I also move, Mr. Chairman, the April 28th meeting minutes for approval. Do I have a second? I do. All those in favor say aye. 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 Jay, did you say aye? I did. And Michael, you said I did. Any opposed say nay. Abstentions? Abstain. Abstain. Two. April 28th is amended. Do I have a motion? We just did April 28th. We just did April 28th. Oh, I thought we, no, we just did March. No. 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 May, May. We, we, we went May from May February April. to April. Oh, I, uh, we don't have the we March don't have ones. March. We don't have the March ones. I do. No? As amended. Well, then go ahead and vote on it then. No, we don't have them as. They were, they were, you don't have the ones that were as amended. I made copies again of the ones that I amended from the workshop. Okay, all right. These were had there were no, no amendments to the March twenty fourth meeting, as I understand it. Correct. So the last one. So all right. Well, we're, we just we did April. So now we have. All right. To so we're hold on. Let me just uh, backtrack here. Okay. Uh, who seconded that? Palermo. It would make it real easy if we do March the same way. <laughs> Not that I'm suggesting. I move approval on the March. I'll second. I'm in. Wait. Couldn't Michael perhaps second mm -hmm. March? Hint, hint. Hmm? What's that? Second <laughs> March. Yes. Second March. I did. Okay. No. no. I seconded March. I was there. No, I didn't hear you second. I did. All right. All right. <laughs> you don't get any more money because you're going to second something. <laughs> well, I didn't think that you'd want to second them because you weren't here. Sure, he could do that. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Abstention? Abstain. All right. We've done April. May 19th, I would move approval as amended. Do so I have a second? Wanna, Mike, you want to second, second. these? Or oh, Mary, okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstentions? Next one is July 20th. Is there another one? Wait. No, July 28th is next. There's no meeting in Wait, June. June. No. We have July as amended. Move I'll approval. move approval, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Jay. Okay, who, I, Jay did. Jay. Jay. Jay was slightly. Jay and Ray. As amended. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Extensions. Abstain. <clears throat> Respectfully. the end of our uh, what about August 25th August. Mr. Chairman? oh wait I got another one I don't have that one I don't have that yeah that was from the previous meeting hold on <coughs> oh I'm sorry I do have a jam February yeah March, April, April. Yeah. With the August stuff. a very short one oh. 
was on the revised site plan approval for the. Kimmy gave me hers, so I'm okay. What? Kimmy gave me hers. Any modifications? Did we anybody move it or second it? Well, first let's see if there's any modifications. It doesn't seem like there's much to input on. Mm. Yeah, I so I would think that, that there'd be very little chance for modification. I did not have any amendments from the workshop on these ones. Looks fine to me. So I have a, do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The last one. Kimmy, you were aye. Mm -hmm. Mary? Yes. Blairmo, yep. Lucas absent, or Jay? You said I? I said I. There should be I no other I. comment because everyone's voted already. So, <clears throat> I think that concludes the business before us. Unless there's anything you think can think of. I move, I move to leave. <laughs> Jay moves. We have a. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I so do. Adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Bills are seven to three.